Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we're on to tier 4 of our Path to the Richelieu series. Which means we are on the Britannia. Or Britannia. Not sure which one it is. Uh, but I kind of noticed something in yesterday's video and today's video. Um, well, today when I logged in, more specifically, that I didn't notice before, and can only mean one thing. Um, if you take a gander up at the top of the bar, I have 129,000 doubloons. I can assure you, I did not buy 129,000 doubloons. Uh, I had 29,000 doubloons, and suddenly I got 100,000 more. I did not notice this. Why didn't I notice this? Because I do this. Like, when I come in, I, I, I open containers in bulk anymore. Uh, that new feature is amazing. I haven't done any crate opening videos for a while because I'm not a big fan of those myself. Uh, but, um, I generally, you know, you get crates on a daily basis from the campaign, from logging in and checking the store every day. With the treasure hunt going on, you can win crates. And a Apparently, um, I got one of the crates from the treasure hunt that had the chance of winning 100,000 gold in it. And when I span, or when I bulk opened the other day, I just, you know, wrote it off. I never win anything in crates anyway, so I just wrote it off. I don't even record them. And, uh, yeah, apparently I won 100,000 gold in one of those crates from the treasure hunt. Um... That's ridiculous. I didn't put the money together to figure out exactly how much that costs, um, but it's not insignificant. <laughs> like, let's just look real quick. Let, let's go to the store. I apologize. I know this is out of the ordinary for, for these, but I, I have to check it, right? Uh, so doubloons is what we're looking for. So let's look at uh, easy number would be the 99.99, right? So 25,000 doubloons is $100. So we just got $400 worth of doubloons, basically, give or take. Holy mother of God. <laughs> and I didn't even get it on video. What is that? What is my luck? Like, honestly, if I knew that there was a chance to get 100,000 gold, maybe I'd have paid more attention to opening them because... That would have been good, but I've never won anything like that before. I barely get ships. I had to give up on getting a, uh, the North Carolina out of a crate in early access because I couldn't get the ship. So, uh, yeah, like, completely unexpected. I apologize this is dragging on, but I just thought you guys should, uh, should, should see that because caught me off guard. I even went, I'm not even lying. I literally went to Wargaming and said, hey, uh, Wargaming. There's a, I think something wrong with my account. Suddenly I have 100,000 more doubloons than I had previously. And I have no idea where they came from. Did you guys give us a present or something? Which would have been a ridiculous present, let's be real. And they're like, no, nah, we, didn't, we didn't do that. And then I even had them double check and verify that it was legit. And it's legit. Like, I apparently at some point opened a crate in the last couple of days that gave me 100,000 gold. So, I'm literally flabbergasted. Yeah, I've never used that word in a sentence either. So, uh, there's that. All right, let's move on to the ship. Now, as always, the rest of these in the line, I'm not going to go over the multiple builds. That'll be in the very first video on the Corbet. For the rest, you're just going to see my current build commander and everything. We are running Robert Gijard. We are running Sharnhorst and Palo de Revel as our commander inspirations. Now, if you do not have Azure Lane Sharnhorst, I recommend either Andrew Cunningham or uh, Charles Madden here. Um, just because it helps with either dispersion or uh, turret rotation and reload. Okay, now that's that's all I'm going to say there. But that's that's a lot of people ask that in the comments, so I'm just trying to get ahead of you. All right, so Flammel Cannoneer, uh, gyrating drill bits, megalomania, and reaching out XXL with the will to rebuild perk. All right, now we are running uh, aiming systems mod one, clearly. 
That's what we almost always run because I need to be able to hit what I'm aiming at. All right. And we are fully upgraded, but as you can see, I didn't quite uh, research everything up to the Norman, or I didn't quite unlock the Normandy this way uh, because I got it early access. If you guys remember, most of the stuff back in the day came out early access. So that's why you see that the XP bar doesn't go all the way up to the next tier. Um, anyway, loadout. We are running the community contributor flag and a type 2 camo. Once again, for that extra 4.5% of incoming fire dispersion. I'm not really caring about too much of the concealment of my ship. Don't want to throw away big, uh, big camos for a low tier ship. But a type 2 camo, I have plenty of them. So I just throw that in there to help uh, people miss me. We're not running any boosters. So, uh, on to the stats. Survivability. We have 39,610 hit points. We have 10% torpedo damage reduction. Artillery. We have 340 millimeter, 45 caliber, 1912s, uh, main guns, and you have 10 of them that reach out to 17.1 kilometers, reload in 25.4 seconds with this build, and the 180 degree turn time is 40 seconds. The HE shell's maximum damage is 4,700 with a 26% fire starting chance. And the AP shell maximum damage is 10,450. Secondary armament. You have 100mm 45 caliber 1931s, which you have 8 of, that reach out to 4.2 kilometers, reload in 4 seconds, and fire HE with a maximum damage of 1,400 and a 6% chance to set fire. Then you have secondaries that you have 139 millimeter 55 caliber 1910s which you have 22 of which is pretty ridiculous 4.2 kilometer range and a reload of just 10 seconds uh well i say just 10 seconds that's pretty bad for a secondary but they're 139 millimeters and you have a lot of them uh he shell maximum damage is 2000 and 8% chance to set fires on those. So both of your secondaries are firing HE. AA defense. Uh, starting to get much better, as you can see. And this will only continue to improve down the line, I'm sure. 25 millimeter 60s, uh, 1939s that you have 16 of that do 45 damage per second and reach out to 3.1 kilometers. Then you have 40 millimeter 56 calibers. Uh, the Bofors Mark III's that you have eight of that do 61 damage per second and reach out to 3.5 kilometers. Then you have the 100 millimeter 45 caliber 1931's that you have eight of that do 27 damage per second and reach out to five kilometers. So the first thing you're going to notice is, unlike the previous uh, tier, you're starting to have your your AA reach a little further and make it better overall so it's doing more damage but it's also reaching further instead of it having to wait for the planes to get right overhead so that the guy on the deck with the rifle can shoot him <laughs> now you're able to hit the planes at 3.1 kilometers at the close like that's the worst uh, but five kilometers for the uh, 100 millimeters and 3.5 for the intermediate okay Maneuverability, 18.9 knots, so still a dreadnought, still slow, but a great turning circle of 580 meters and a good, uh, great rudder shift time of 12.5 seconds. So very, very maneuverable. Concealment, 14.5 kilometers isn't very good for uh, low tier battleships, but at the same time, we're not running concealment to try to help with that. Obviously, we're not doing anything concealment wise, so it's to be expected. It's a big ship. Uh, detectability by air is 10.8 kilometers. Guaranteed is always 2. And 11.2 kilometer smoke firing penalty. Armor. Once again, you can see the armor pretty good. And once again, you have the belt going all the way to the bow. Now, see, this is some of the things that I'm actually learning with the armor viewer. Back when I played the ship, there was no armor viewer, so you didn't know. You just had to take the ships out, play them, and try to figure out where your weaknesses were, where your strengths are, and play to that. Now that we have the armor viewer, you can clearly see that we have belt armor going all the way up to the bow that is 120 millimeters thick, so nobody's overmatching that, but it's a much thinner belt and less of it is above the waterline, meaning you're more likely to take those 
overmatching penetrations through that upper bow armor. Uh, not going to get Citadel most likely through it, but it's only 19 millimeters thick, uh, meaning that anything with 102 millimeter HE shells can go right through it, and 102 millimeter AP shells can go through it. Now, I didn't do the math for the overmatching, so I can't really remember, but let's just say battleships will have no trouble overmatching you. At least in the thin armor. Uh, get rid of that, and we get on to the... Uh, well, let's leave that in. We've got the 250 millimeter torpedo belt protection right there. And that's on top of your citadel, obviously. Uh, which is submerged. And once again, you have that same sloped citadel. So even if people do manage at close range to hit the super or the citadel, those rounds are more likely to skirt off the citadel and, and detonate inside the ship or just overpin altogether. Um, your best bet for these is to hit middle of the ship. However, again, at range, that works against you. At range, you have those shells coming in through the side at a steeper angle, and they will likely penetrate that citadel much, much easier. So keep that in mind. All right, so let's look at the overview. Long reach above average main battery range. Hit them before they can hit you. Compromising. Higher caliber AP shells may overpin the armor, but may still arm, depending on shell velocity. Britannia, or Britannia. A series of French battleships built in response to the appearance of British super dreadnoughts. These ships were developed directly from the ships of the preceding class, which goes to show the armor scheme is very similar, the uh, amount of secondary is very similar, the citadel location and shape is very similar, it's basically the same, uh, and then you get better AA. Okay, so. The ships were developed directly from the ships of the preceding class, but carried 340 millimeter guns arranged under a more rational scheme. Rather than having the two wing turrets, um, you have just eight or ten guns total, one central turret that can fire either direction. Okay, and uh, yeah, she entered service in 1916. There were three of them in the series. So let's take a look at her again. Not much change from the uh, the Corbet other than the gun layout and uh, the extra AA. It's a very good looking ship. Uh, I like battleships, I'm not going to lie. Battleships are some of the sexiest ships on the sea. Uh, nobody can, can argue with me on that. They just are. Battleships are sexy. So, with that being said, let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so we're going to be on the Solomon Islands. And we are in the Britannia. Now, uh, just to clear up from earlier... Uh, I have gotten back with Wargaming, and they have confirmed that it was a super secret Santa crate from the treasure hunt that gave me the 100,000 doubloons that just mysteriously appeared in my thing. So, uh, definitely, treasure hunt has paid off. And I haven't even, like, gone super hardcore into it. I've just kind of, you know, played a few games on a day. You get the things, you get your four keys, you go onto treasure.worldofwarshipslegends.com, and you click on your things. Um... So yeah, pretty freaking lucky. I can't believe it still. But uh, we're going to get away from that, and we're going to get back into the gameplay. Now, uh, Britannia definitely a step up from the Corbet. The Corbet definitely isn't my favorite. Uh, Britannia seems to be much more um, reliable. And so, uh, yeah, we're going to showcase that in this one. So hopefully you guys are ready. It'll be fun. There'll be a lot, of, uh, a lot of people in this one that just kind of... Uh, I don't know. It just it doesn't end the way I'd hope. It's gonna be a good one. Just just relax and watch. It's gonna be fun. There's a lot of things that go on in this this fight, and uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy. But we're heading over towards Bravo. We've got a couple destroy or a couple cruisers with us. Their aircraft carrier spawned directly across from us behind the uh, volcano, and is flying through the mid. Uh, we're not detected yet, but I imagine that'll change in the near future. Speaking of which, there it is. Uh, now, that tells me that either a cruiser or a destroyer is coming up on me. Uh, then it disappears, 
and then moments later it reappears and spots me again. Um, it's not the plane spotting me, it is direct line of sight. So we know there's a ship out here, we just have to find it. And still maintaining our course, there we have the Konigsberg at 14.1 kilometers. We're going to go ahead and see if we can't reach out and touch this man. With our French magic bullets and that first shot looks absolutely juicy. Really? <laughs> you were waiting for the pow! I know you were. But no, that, that was a really. Um, but, you know, it happens. And that's going to come back to bite me. Uh, this Koenig, on the other hand, is sailing broadside onto me. And unfortunately for him, he doesn't get the uh, really moment. Uh, he gets some pretty horizontal dispersion and absolutely gets touched for 11,000 damage. And that's about the time that I see the guys in the middle cap. And so, without looking directly at them right away, uh, we go ahead and we start getting uh, our reload. Just as we're about to get our reload, we wait. Uh, Kirov looks like he's about to run aground. He does. Konigsberg is angled beautifully to us, so we're gonna take this opportunity, and unfortunately for him, POW! <laughs> he does not get the lucky salvo that his uh, compatriot did. But uh, Kirov also is playing with fire here. He is bow tanking a battleship in a cruiser that just absolutely gets murdered by battleships, and then he turns out and makes it a little bit less. Now this dispersion is awful, but that doesn't matter because we still absolutely touch the man, taking a third of his hit points. And because of our fast reload, we're going to be able to do it again pretty quickly here. Uh, now, we're in the cap helping to capture this base. Might as well steal a little bit of that XP while we can. And uh, Kirov, you play with fire too many times. And you can see he's being touched by the cruisers as well. You play with fire too many times, you're going to get burned. <laughs> and down he goes. Uh, speaking of which, he fires one last set of high explosive at me and sets me on fire. Now, Conic here, we've got to be a little bit careful with. We, we know how tough the Conic can be to kill. It's a pretty tanky battleship. But then again, so are we. So he turns in, he does the right thing. He doesn't want to sit broadside to us. He's also a German battleship, so he's got a little more hit points to his superstructure than we do. So uh, he's able to be absolutely touched, even though he turned in. And we accounted for that. Now, we're still leaving ourselves a little too open for him. He gets a really good hit here. Uh, but we're trying to catch this Konigsberg, and uh, we're really hoping for the Death Strike here. He's not got a camo on. Uh, this time we catch him off guard pretty easily, uh, and he doesn't make a move, but once again, uh, right at the last second, he turns in, which I would assume would be good for us, but unfortunately it just ends up in overpins, three of them to be exact. Uh, and then we get hit pretty good, but notice I'm not sitting flat broadside to the battleship. Even though I'm I'm trying to get rid of this car or this Konigsberg. Uh, I know that the battleship's there, so I can't just sit flat broadside to him. So we're angled away from the battleship to still give us our best chance. Now that shot should have been death. That shot should have been death. But once again, he gets away with it with five overpins because reasons. Uh, he's got no camo on, so that's not it. Uh, like I, I don't know, man. The game just sometimes it giveth. And RNG sometimes taketh away. That's just the way it works. We got the dev strike on the Konigsberg early, and we cannot dev strike this one because balance. Uh, the Konigsberg or the Konig, good lord, I'm getting them mixed up now. The Konig over here, the battleship, uh, leaves himself a little too open. We go for that bow side plating, and we absolutely punch him in the mouth. Our uh, cruiser has decided that he doesn't want to live any longer and is rushing in to try to get some torpedoes off. And does he manage to get the torpedoes off? That's the question. Koenig is turning hard, so I would say yes. Uh, and we get a nasty hit on him as our Karlsruhe ends up dying and failing to torp the Koenig. Now, uh, the Koenig and I are about to get into a pretty significant fight. Uh, where it just shows that one player knows what they're doing and the other one just doesn't really have that big of a grasp. This guy isn't a noob. I'm not saying he's a noob. But uh, you can see he's doing damage to me, but I'm getting pretty good damage off of him in return. And since I started with more hit points here, 
he's he's not having a good time and uh, we've got to be careful against this guy has shown that he at least knows what he's doing but we're also trying to uh, get rid of him as quickly as possible now we're aiming higher up towards the gun in the uh, the upper hull plating and we go through it and we knock out one of his guns temporarily and now we've got him right where we want him. We've still got 15,000 hit points. He doesn't have a whole lot of hit points left. And we're going to be able to uh, hopefully finish him in this next salvo. Uh, good fight by him. But unfortunately for him, uh, he, he let me get too much off of him too early. And that is his ultimate undoing as we get a fire on him. And he actually cracks us here. I wasn't ready for that. I honestly thought that he wasn't reloaded yet. Uh, so he, he catches me. And that is ultimately going to be my undoing. Uh, because this Konigsberg is going to be able to uh, come out in a moment. Now, I see the Karlsruhe over here, so we're going to go ahead and take a shot at him. Uh, might as well. We send one gun at him. Because I'm fairly confident that that one gun is enough to finish him off. And, wait for it. Got him. That's all we needed. Now here, I try to force a shot over the island, hoping that I could catch this Konig, uh, Konigsberg over the island. But it doesn't work out for us. Our battleship is pushing their carrier over there. And our uh, cruiser that we're fighting has decided it's time to come out. And I am salivating. I am waiting for this opportunity. And unfortunately, I get a little too aggressive... I use auto-aim over the island. I should have held that shot, and I should have tried to uh, get rid of him the old-fashioned way, right? Like, this guy should have died in that salvo. All I had to do was hold my shot and wait for a good opportunity. Now, we've got five seconds left. We're about to get loaded. Uh, are we going to be able to finish this guy off? We don't have a lot of hit points, so we're praying to God that this finishes him off. Uh, fortunately, the carrier finally shows up to give us a little bit of support in this fight and uh, ends up tor torping the guy, but not before he hits me one last time to give me just enough to not be able to get my damage con off. And our battleship is about to lose the fight against the enemy carrier. Meaning that it is a carrier versus carrier fight to decide who wins this battle. We had four kills. We were a couple seconds away from getting a Kraken Unleashed in our second straight French battleship game. But we came up short. Our team is losing on points. The enemy managed to get the center cap faster than we managed to get this cap. So they got the points lead. But it comes down to one carrier versus another. An enemy, or a friendly Rhine versus an enemy, is it, uh, I forget, I think it's a Langley. Uh, so this could go either way now our guy has all of his hit points because he sat in the back the entire game the enemy carrier also sat in the back the entire game but had to deal with a battleship pushing him and obviously the battleship done some damage so our carrier has the huge advantage here but notice our carrier is also not settling for just the advantage that he has in hit points well, the warships, anything can happen. One torpedo strike could potentially detonate your ship. It's unlikely, but it could. And so he is pushing into the center cap. The other, the other carrier is pushing into Charlie cap. Another great play. Both of these carriers doing something to try to win without necessarily killing the other guy. Because you're not guaranteed to be able to kill the other guy when it's carriers and carriers freaking AA is ridiculous so especially at these low tiers it's kind of hard to uh, get consistent damage off of the carriers uh, but with that being said they're both playing to try to get points to keep the lead or to get the lead in our case and also trying to attack one another and this is ultimately going to be what decides this match are they going to be able to kill one another we don't know but because our our carrier is moving into the a cap he is going to be able to flip a second cap and that is going to give us the points lead period 
uh, because we will have two caps to their one. Their carrier is too far away from the center cap to be able to do anything to uh, hold it, really. Uh, you can send your planes out, do some damage, you'll reset them a couple times, but here's the problem. We're getting points and he's not while we're in the cap. So either way, whether we can flip this or whether we can just contest it, we win. Uh, unless he kills us. And more importantly, our carrier actually ends up winning the match by killing the enemy Langley. And uh, you can see, left him with just enough to get away for a little while longer. But you can see that there are dive bombers on route. They're already, it's a full, full uh, fleet or full air division, full squadron. That's the word I was looking for, squadron of, uh, die, of the HE bombs coming. And so it's just a matter of time. He's not going to be able to shoot down all of these planes before he drops a single bomb. And all he needs is one hit. One hit. Heck, at this low a health, even a hit off to the side that normally wouldn't do much damage could potentially finish him. I have no idea how much health that enemy carrier has, but it's not much. And as you can see, we did manage to flip the center cap. So, regardless of how the bomb drop goes, which looks pretty solid, and down he goes. We would have won that match. So, well done to the carrier there. Uh, wish he'd have came through a little bit sooner to help me uh, with that guy that was sitting in the middle. Uh, but is what it is. We still got four kills, 2,367 base XP, high caliber dev strike, top of the leaderboard. So if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.